Good morning, good morning guys. We're back at it again with another video. This is a project that I have been very excited to start, something that I've been thinking about for a while, and that's taking this 2003 Tacoma and making it, uh, what's the phrase? Real NAS? Real NAS. So I bought this truck about three months ago uh, from a guy in Tucson. It's got just under 180,000 miles on it. I wanted a truck that was going to be a little bit smaller, a little bit more nimble, um, if you've ever driven a big F-250 or F-350 um, or a similar size truck, they're nice because the trucks are big, the beds are big, and you can haul heavy loads with it. Um, I wanted something that's going to be more of like a work truck, something where I can get into tight spaces um, and then just cruising around in this is going to be a lot nicer than a bigger truck. So with a project like this, what I actually start out with is listing everything that I want the truck to either have or be able to do. So one of the most important things that I want this truck to be able to do is I want it to be able to go anywhere. So when I was looking at used vehicles, um, I actually just used Facebook Marketplace and that's how I found this truck. I had to be very determined that I wanted to get a four wheel drive truck. Um, there was lots of two wheel drive trucks and Tacomas kind of in this age range here um, that I wanted. I wanted a first generation Tacoma. Um, I just kind of like the look of it and I think it's just a I think it's just a badass truck with how old it is. So we had to get four wheel drive and that's what we got. I've already replaced all the wheels on the truck. Um, it originally just had just, I don't know, the rims, I didn't really like the look of the rims at all. Uh, so we got some new Nomad rims and then some also beefy um, Falcon MT tires. These are gonna be awesome tires. So if I get into a sticky situation or a slippery situation, then these tires are gonna be awesome for off-roading. So the next main thing that I wanted for this truck is the ability to haul pretty heavy loads, but also very long loads as well. So if you're thinking like a 16 foot two by four or very long lumber like that, um, I wanted a way to be able to haul that stuff securely to the truck. So we're gonna be taking out the truck bed and then building our custom canopy here and then integrated into the canopy is going to be a roof rack. Now the roof rack is gonna be really cool because I'm gonna make it such that you can load it from the side with a forklift and then just drop the material onto the top of the truck. Now I could just fabricate a roof rack and just uh, fasten it right to the truck bed here. Um, but something else that I really want for this is to have a fully enclosed canopy in the back so that if I have tools and all that kind of stuff in the back, it's not gonna be exposed to any of the elements at all. So that's really important to me. So another thing that's really important to me is having onboard electricity and compressed air. So I'll use one of those battery generator units. That way, any of our chop saws um, or any power hungry tools, um, they're gonna run fine on that battery generator. Also having the battery generator in there as well and some small solar panels just to charge it up and I'll also be able to charge cordless batteries as well right in the canopy. So on top of the four wheel drive and the big tires, uh, we wanna be able to recover ourselves or other vehicles with this truck as well. So we're gonna take off the stock bumper here. So I've got one of those bumper kits that you can weld together. So we'll get that fastened to the truck there. And then I've also got a nice worn winch. So we'll get a nice winch on the front here. I'm also probably gonna either modify the existing bumper or just redo an entire bumper, put some shackles on it, and just try to make this truck as useful as possible um, if we're in kind of a sticky situation and we have to get ourselves out. One other thing that I really wanna focus on with this is that once we have the truck bed off and we've got the truck much more exposed, is to basically do whatever I can to the truck frame and to the underside of the truck to basically promote longevity. Uh, so I've got some bed liner spray uh, that we're going to be using and coating as many of the, uh, the steel pieces to that so that uh, you know we're not going to have any rust issues or anything like that. It's just going to last forever. And one of the last major things that I want for this is the ability to kind of have a shaded area. So this is going to be optional and I'm not sure if it's going to fit and or if it's going to work exactly how I want but we're going to try to figure it out with this is to have one of those 270 degree awnings to be able to come off the side and wrap around the back of the truck that way you've got like a shaded area from the sun uh, from the rain from the elements there so that you can still kind of be around the truck and still being able to do some things so one other important thing that I've already had done in the truck is I had a local mechanic redo all the suspension. So the previous suspension system, some of it was aftermarket, 
Some of it wasn't even for this truck, so I just had them redo everything. Um, so the front struts or the front shocks, that's pretty standard there. Um, but what I had them do extra on the back here is because we're gonna be adding this, this uh, steel canopy and it's gonna add a little bit of weight to the truck. So I've already got the dry weight of the truck, it's 4,100 pounds. So once we add the truck canopy on, it's gonna add a little bit of extra weight. And the rear suspension now with the new leaf springs and struts or shocks, I don't know what they're called. I'm not a car guy, all right? Um, whatever it is, they're about 30% stronger than whatever the stock would have been. So when we have more weight on this, it's just going to help it, A, look a lot more level, and it's just, you're not gonna bottom out that rear suspension as much. Now it's time to get started. So first thing we gotta do, take that truck bed off. Here we go. So I think I've learned by this time in my construction and fabrication experience, if I think something's gonna take a couple weeks, you probably estimate that it's gonna take at least twice as long, which is what this ended up taking. Um, but this was totally awesome. The truck's actually already finished right now. Um, I'm just getting around to um, finishing editing these videos, uh, which is actually really good because there's a number of things, well not a number, a few things that I definitely would have changed and um, a lot of things that I learned through the fabrication process here. So what I'm fabricating here are the truck frame mounts. So our canopy will sit on top of these mounts here and then bolt directly to the frame. Uh, the nice thing with this canopy is that if I ever wanted to take it off and put it on another first gen Tacoma, um, you just have to lift it off and drop it onto another one and everything should line up. So I want to give a big shout out to Mika from Overland Under Budget. Um, his videos on Instagram and on YouTube were very helpful with um, getting this kind of truck bed situated. And he was definitely one of the bigger inspirations of doing a first gen Tacoma. Um, I saw the look of his truck, really liked it. And let's go ahead and do something similar. But obviously uh, I'm not doing a camper or anything like that. This is strictly for work. So one thing that I was definitely trying to be mindful of is the weight, the weight that I'm adding to the truck. Tacomas are, you know, light duty trucks. So you don't want to be adding a ton of weight to these things because the motor, you know, is it's not like a huge 
supercharged motor that's in my F250, it's, it's much smaller. So we have to be mindful of the weight. Uh, so one thing that I would change already on this is the bottom part of the truck. I, I use eighth inch wall steel for all of that, which I think is good. But any of these vertical members and any of this uh, structural stuff towards the top, um, I also use eighth inch gauge and I used eighth inch because I was I was actually modeling this after a roof rack that goes on um, that goes on a truck and they use eighth inch wall um, but I think for the weight of the material it doesn't add enough strength because um, you really for something like this you, you really just need more rigidity than anything because on the top of the truck there's not going to be you know a thousand or fifteen hundred pounds or anything like that so these pieces here that I'm putting in they're all eighth wall and if I had switched them to either 14 gauge or 16 gauge um, I would have saved probably at least 100 to 150 pounds off the uh, total weight of the truck, uh, which would have been nice. But uh, hey, when you're doing these fabrication projects and you're doing it for the very first time, you know, you try to think of everything. You want things to be safe and strong, but there's also the weight factor as well. And since I already have the truck done, I've already had it weighed with it at its final weight. I ended up adding about 650 pounds with the canopy, the front bumper, rock sliders that you guys will see, and, and the rear bumper that I fabricated. So um, with adding another 400 to 500 pounds of you know load, we're still well within the range of the load capacity of this truck, which I think is around 1,300 pounds. Uh, but these Tacomas, I mean, it's got... Um, it's got a tow limit of 5,000 pounds, but when you read through forums, um, which I've done a lot through this truck because with these older trucks, there's just so many kind of like little quirks and little things that, you know, other guys have figured out. Hauling up to 5,000 pounds is, is definitely going to be tricky with this truck. It, it, realistically, it's probably around three to 4,000 pounds that you'd be able to safely haul with it. So this piece that I'm putting in here is one of the cross members that the, um, that the material will sit on for the for the roof rack. So one of the things here that I just didn't really take into account, and that's because I changed things kind of part way, is I was just planning on putting steel, sheet steel, over all of this. Um, once I calculated the weight difference between sheet steel and aluminum, uh, aluminum sheet, it was about a savings of about 250, 300 pounds. So that made the decision real easy to sheet this with aluminum as opposed to steel. And so when I was doing this roof, I, I had intended of, on just, you know, welding the sheet into place and not thinking that, you know, maybe I would potentially rivet it to the roof. So how I would do those roof members would be different and the roof design would be a little bit different. Uh, one of the important things that I wanted in, in this truck was the ability to have all my pack outs. Um, so on one side here, there's gonna be side swinging doors on either side for easy access to the inside of the canopy, is to put in these recessed pack out mounts. So I can put all of my tools right in there, open up a door and I have easy access to everything. And I'm getting some pieces of one by two by eighth inch wall into place here. I'm using eighth wall here because I'm gonna be threading some bolts into it. Um, and this is for a small welding plate on the rear there so that I can actually do fabrication right in my truck. So the main framing members, I use eighth wall. And like I mentioned earlier, I wish I had changed it to 14 gauge or 16 gauge. The strength just really isn't that necessary or the thickness. And the entire front part, um, I did it in eighth wall. And uh, before I sent the canopy to powder coat, I just ended up redoing it in 16 gauge and it saved probably about 70 pounds off the truck. So there's a lot of like little things like that that I've been learning. Um, weight is definitely important. Awesome guys, I'll be banging out these videos. So the next one will be out very soon. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.